Welcome back everyone to episode number 6 of the tutorial series, and today we're going to be going over advanced modeling. We're going to cover some crazy techniques, uh, a ton of features of Blender I haven't talked about yet, and I'm going to show you guys how to make some pretty insane looking stuff. Let's not waste any more time and just hop right into it. Advanced modeling techniques. Okay, to start off, we're going to talk about the cell fracture add-on. Now, I guess, well, it's not really an add-on. I'm not really sure what to call it, but uh, if you go into uh, edit mode right here, and if you press F3 on your keyboard uh, you get this little search bar where you can search for just about any tool in blender and if you search for cell fracture you can see it right there i don't actually know any other menu where you can pull this up but it's probably somewhere and this does some absolute magic to your mesh but uh first of all we have to subdivide it and so there's only a couple faces to work with and you can't make anything cool with that so just right click and subdivide eh, a couple times till we got a lot of faces to work with now press f3 uh type in the cell fracture add-on just like that uh there's a ton of settings you can mess with but just the default settings work fine for me press ok on that and i forgot to go into object mode one sec exact same thing but just make sure you're in object mode before you do it oh yeah that looks a little bit better we're gonna move these guys out of the way because the cube that was there before is still gonna be in place we can just go ahead and delete it grab all these place them back in the center and you can see we have a really unique mesh right here so what the cell fracture did is it essentially takes the original mesh and it just restructures it in terms of a hundred different really tiny meshes. Like I can start taking these out of the way. You can see it's not hollow at all. All the pieces meet up together like perfectly aligned. It, it's super cool honestly but we can do some fun stuff with this. So if I press F3 again I can search for the randomized transform add-on which also does some pretty sick stuff. So I'll click on it press this menu in the bottom left and we can just change the location a little bit the Y a little bit and the Z a little bit and this is how I actually created the object in the thumbnail for this video. Video. So if you displace all these just a little bit, it looks super cool because it still takes on the shape of the cube, but it's, it's just deformed enough to where it's pretty different looking. This is something cool to use for renders, thumbnails, I mean you could even sell something like this. And obviously this is just the cell fracture used on a cube, so let's try it on something else. Monkey. Subdivide you a couple times, back into object mode, cell fracture, there we go, okay. This one's a little bit buggy since the more complex the mesh gets, the harder it is for the cell fracture to work properly. But if we move this guy out of the way, delete the original mesh, let's see we have a couple straggly bits here, but yeah this basically worked still. If I randomly transform this, uh, let's change these tolerances down just a little bit and we still mostly have the shape of a monkey that's pretty cool it's kind of cool to create shapes like this where they they resemble something but they're not exactly that thing so they're very like abstract meshes like it's kind of like a picasso painting it resembles something but it's not that thing super cool you can create it in 3d space and really easily as well like that was literally maybe two minutes of work i've said this a million times but experiment with this see what cool stuff you can make with it and next up i want to talk about the simple deform modifier now to use this, there's actually a special mesh I want to use. So in one of my earlier tutorials, uh, I talked about, I believe it was the extra meshes add-on. So if I go up to edit and preferences, we can just search for this one, add mesh, extra objects, make sure that's enabled. Now we can press shift A, go down to extras and wall factory, get a nice wall like this. Now uncheck openings down here so we just have a straight brick wall. Now before we use the simple deform modifier, we're going to modify this wall a little bit just to make the whole thing look cooler. Go into edit mode press separate and buy loose parts. Now press F3, get randomized transform again, but this time we're only going to mess with the Y location. You'll see why in a minute. When this gets randomized, the bricks look offset just to represent a little bit of error when they were like put together by construction workers. Now tab back into edit mode, select everything, go to individual origins up here, press S and scale them up till they just barely overlap each other. Now it looks a little bit more like a brick wall. Now select everything, join them together, go into modify, and press bevel. Oh yeah. You might have to scale them up again because the bevel modifier can kind of change the dimensions. Yeah, that's what we're, that's kind of what we're going for though. Now the simple deform modifier is going to bend this into basically a tower. So we're going to hit add modifier, simple deform. Now there's a couple different options you can do like there's a twist, bend, there's a taper, there's a stretch. Oh my gosh. But of course we want to use the bend and we're going to want it on the Z axis. Oh, you can see where this is going. Now if you just mess with the angle, you can essentially just choose where you want your tower. 
Yeah, 360 degrees, and it's basically just a tower. That's so cool. I'm gonna do some experimenting, though. What if we did the x-axis and bent it like this? Oh, you could do a sick animation with something like that. Speaking of which, why not? Press I to add a keyframe on this. Scrub forward in the timeline. Uh, let's crank this down a lot and add another keyframe. And now in the timeline, we can play this bending in real time, which is super sick. Like, it looks so basic, but the stuff you could do with this modifier is insane. I mean, it even has simple in the name just to try to throw people off the scent of how good it is. Dude, same thing with the cell fracture add-on. Like, it's so hard to find that thing because of how powerful it is. Blender is just afraid of people knowing about tools like this because of the stuff you can do with it. All right, last tool of the day. To demonstrate, I'm gonna be making frosting on a donut with it, but you can do just about anything you want. Shift A, add a cube, scale it way up. Shift A, add a torus. I'm gonna crank up the minor radius to make it really thick. Now I'm gonna add in a circle. Uh, I'll scale it up, extrude you like that, select everything, extrude these parts inward, very nice. And there's our frosting. Okay, under the physics tab, this is getting a fluid simulation, and this is fluid. The object above the object below is going to be fluid. Then you click on your main object. This is going to be a fluid obstacle. The outside object is going to be a fluid domain. Now under the domain tab, click bake. Make a nice beautiful pie. And the transformation already occurred. Look at that. And it's all done. So the object you had before is the fluid. You can just go ahead and delete. Go back into solid view. And now, watch the magic. If I scrub forward in the timeline, the frosting will fall and intersect with the object below it. Revolutionary things taking place here, people. We have water in Blender. You can watch it fall and spread all over the place. But that's not why we're here. So, if you take it at just the right frame, like, mm, the frosting's a little bit thick there. Maybe about right there. There we go. You can apply Apply the fluid simulation under the modifier tab, and now it's going to stay frozen, molded into that frame. Shade that guy smooth, shade this top guy smooth, scale it into that donut just like that, scale it down just a little bit, and bam, we have a beautiful looking uncolored donut. And once again, that took basically two seconds. So what we did was essentially simulate fluid in Blender, and we set the donut here to act as the obstacle for the fluid, like what it would inter intersect with. All this stuff sounds really complicated, but it's literally built into blender already so it's way easier than it sounds so after the fluid intersected with the donut we just skipped forward into the timeline until we found the exact frame that it looked the most like frosting then we just applied the fluid sim on that frame and it stayed frozen in that position now you can even like take it out go into edit mode mess with the shape anything you want because this is just a solid mesh now after we applied that fluid sim super cool stuff and you could experiment with this one for probably 30 years and still not find all the stuff you can do with it i i can't even. It's insane. I hope you all learned something today, and have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you all in episode number seven of the tutorial series. Also, if y'all haven't done it already, please go check out Creality Cloud. It's an awesome 3D marketplace that has a ton of models available, and they're super cool people. Go check them out.